Hello and welcome to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling and I thank you for tuning in for this episode. This one's going to be me going through 20 of my favorite deluxe editions or reissues of albums. I'm going to call them deluxe editions. Basically, uh, any CD that's not the original CD that was released for whichever album it was. And there's been a lot of these over the years. Sometimes several versions of, of the same album have been redone, especially for albums that continue to be big sellers and you'll see one here I've got an example that I have twice two different com completely two different reissues so I decided instead of doing these in the order alphabetical order uh, trying to pick some sort of favorite or the order that I got them I'm gonna go through them in order that the original albums were released in some cases these are the same as the release date because Nowadays, when a new album comes out, it's rare that you don't have an option of at least some sort of version that's more than just the standard retail edition. So, let's start to go through these deluxe editions on this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. Uh, the oldest album we're going to be talking about originally came out in 1971. This was a nice surprise for my birthday last year for my kids, Jack and Marley, who you've seen on the show, and started me on my Yes collection. This is a deluxe edition of Fragile. Like I said, the album originally came out in 1971. This is a 2003 reissue that Rhino did. Rhino Records does really well uh, with their reissues. What's different on this from the original album, they've included uh, their cover of Simon and Garfunkel's America and also uh, early rough mix of the, the best known song here, one of their best known songs, period, Roundabout. So, slipcase. So here's the actual digipack. I like how they've recreated the red and green Atlantic logo for the CD itself. And uh, some of these were the original credits that were included with the album. And some of them are not. It's a lengthy write-up on the album here and lots of cool Roger Dean artwork. Always very cool with the artwork. So that was a nice surprise to get last year. And it kind of led me to you know, kind of rediscovering a band that um, kind of went by me first, you know, earlier. Uh, I mentioned Rhino. You're going to see the, you're going to hear the word Rhino mentioned a lot here because they do really good uh, reissues. There's another one that I like. This is uh, Alice Cooper Billion Dollar Babies. This is, uh, originally came out in 1973. This reissue came out in 2001 in a digipack. It's really, really well done, especially when you consider that the early CDs weren't really equipped to handle special packaging and Alice did all kinds of special packaging with the early albums. So this opens up like the record did. Uh, there was an actual big you know billion dollar bill in this money clip. They just recreated the look of it here. Opens up this way. It's a two disc set. So disc one and this has the old uh, sort of green Warner Brothers logo that was being used at that time. That's the actual album remastered. This is a live concert and there's some rarities on the end here, some uh, hard to find songs. That's the original way that the lyrics appeared. This picture appeared on the inner sleeve. Uh, all the lyrics are in here and a lengthy write up on the album. Uh, there's been other Alice Cooper reissues. Uh, there's one for Welcome to My Nightmare. That's just a single disc one. Cool as it is, it's not uh, as impressive looking as this one. Uh, one that only came out within the last year, and uh, one of my favorite albums from the 70s is the debut Montrose album. We did an album, or an episode all about Montrose. If you type in Tim's Final Confessions Montrose, if you're a fan, you can check that out. Or if you're not sure who they are, but you're a fan of Sammy Hagar, you want to check it out. You really want to check that out. So, their first album originally came out in 1973. This is a reissue that came out in 2017. It's got the original album on it. Some uh, bonus tracks, some demos, including songs that have never appeared anywhere else. There's even a, a radio show broadcast on here. And lots more packaging that even came with the original album. Now these CDs recreate the Warner Brothers Burbank logo that they used on the original issue of the album. And of course, a booklet in here talking about the, the band, but mainly concentrating on the time period surrounding the first album. Liner notes by a guy named Mike Mettler, who's uh, written a lot of articles for classic rock bands over the years. 
Next one, uh, the album originally came out in 1977, and the reissue happened in 2014. This is Kiss Love Gun. This is a universal issue, and they do a good job on their deluxe editions. So it's the original album on disc one. Disc two is some outtakes, including versions of songs that would end up morphed into songs that ended up on some of the solo albums. And there's an old radio interview with Gene Simmons as well. That's uh, from the original Kiss album. The two discs and it's the, quite a big booklet that comes with this. There's memorabilia that have that has to do with the time period. Thoughts from the band members on each of the songs. I would welcome more of these deluxe editions for Kiss albums if I had to throw my hat in the ring suggesting one. I think they should do one on Dynasty, but who's to say if they will or not. Next up is an album that originally came out in 1978, an album that was never meant to be released in North America. It was originally just for Japan only. Ended up being this band's biggest album. Cheap Trick at Budokan was originally a 10-song album that came out in 1978, and of course, it's the live version of I Want You to Want Me that uh, is the reason that anybody knows who Cheap Trick is today. This is a deluxe edition. Different cover, slightly. This came out in 2010, and this pulls everything together. So, the entire concert obviously was more than the 10 songs that appeared on the original Budokan album. The remainder of those songs eventually was released in 1993 by Epic as Budokan 2. This collects all of those songs together in the order that they were supposed to be in. A DVD from one of the original shows, Friday, April 28th. Some bonus features, including some uh, return to Budokan from 2008. And this, of course, was put out by Sony. So it's a CD-DVD package. For nostalgic value, I think you should get the original CD. But if you want it all, this is the one to get, too. As usual, there's a write-up and some memorabilia pictured along with it. And, you know, I like Cheap Trick. I wasn't a, a diehard fan following them for many years, but I know this was like a holy grail when this actually came out. So, another live album to talk about, and an unsung one at that. 1981, Nazareth released a live album. They actually recorded in Vancouver called Snaz. Now, it's a, it's a funny-sounding title. It's uh, short for It's Naz. I'll show you what I mean. Here's the uh, It's Naz. So, Snaz. Uh, kind of an unusual, uh, you know, kind of an unusual title. This originally came out in 1981 on A&M Records. This is a reissue uh, that was done in 2011 by a company called Salvo, which did a massive Nazareth reissue campaign. I really like what they did with this because they were smart. It's, it's a smart reissue. First of all, they're recreating the original uh, photos that were inside of the album. There's the two discs. Originally, this was released just as a single disc, and it omitted some songs. This brings everything back, and uh, and then some. Plenty of credits telling about the, uh, you know, the recording of the album. But one of the things that I really liked about this reissue is that they were they were smart about things. And sometimes when bands have songs on soundtracks, it's just about impossible for them to get the rights to them to put out on one of their own compilations. But uh, and one of the bonus tracks is called Crazy, A Suitable Case for Treatment. Now that song originally appeared on the heavy metal movie soundtrack, which was released on Electric. It was not released on A&M. Somehow they were able to get the song and put it on here. Why? Because it came out in 81. It's the same time period. So the, any stray songs that were around there, they're collecting them at the right time. I like when they do that. Plus, I just think this is an overlooked live album. If you're looking for a classic rock live album that you haven't heard a million times, I'd recommend Snaz by Nazareth. Also in 1981, uh, this is also one of my favorite debut albums from the 1980s. And in uh, the late 90s, Motley Crue did something I think every veteran band wishes they could. Uh, they and Metallica are two bands that come to mind that were able to do what so many can't. And that's get back the rights to their masters, their original albums from Elektra. And they put them out on their own label, Motley Records, which is distributed by 
Beyond, which is a company that's no longer in existence. I think BMG ultimately was the distributor. And they put out their um, Crucial Crew series. And this is a, a very... They had lots of stray songs too, and they collected them along the way in, in the correct you know, time period that they belong to. I'm going to highlight this one. This is their debut album, Too Fast for Love, for 1981. And as you can see, this is the Crucial Crew reissued version. I actually got this from Columbia House. It's just a single disc, but it's very, very valuable. Originally, this album had nine songs. This collects four bonus tracks. Now, one of those is an extended version of Too Fast for Love, the title song. The other ones are well worth the purchase, even if you've got the original CD. It includes the A and B side of their original independent single, Toast of the Town with Stick to Your Guns. Now, Toast of the Town is, I think, one of the best Motley songs. How it ever got off, le left off an album like this, I don't know how that could happen. Because it could have been a single back in the day. So there you go. And because they're reissues, there are retrospective, uh, you know, reminiscences from various band members talking about the making of their first album. But if you're a Motley fan, I think you know you know about the history of how Too Fast for Love originally came out on Leather Records, and so did that first single. This collects it all in one place. Uh, okay, next up, we're in 1984 now. White Snake's North American breakthrough album slided in on Geffen Records, uh, famously reissued from its UK counterpart, uh, remixed, I should say, slightly different sounding mixes. A little bit of a confusing story. This collection in 2009, which was released on its 25th anniversary, collects all the versions of Slided In together. So this is a UK version I've got, which is on EMI. Disc 1 is the US remix of the album, which was in, even in a different order. And uh, bonus tracks include the UK mixes to almost all the songs, plus a B-side called Need Your Love So Bad. And Disc 2 does something very, very smart. Collects... Uh, it's a DVD of videos, the original videos from the album, and later live versions of songs from the album. These are some single covers that happened, and uh, just a good collection overall. If you're really into this time period of White Snake, it's worth, again, it's, it's worth spending the money for an album that you've already bought. Big long write up in here as well about uh, how it all came together. Uh, the you know, the White Snake story is a confusing one, for sure. This at least uh, attempts to explain what was going on at that period in time. Uh, also in 1984, now Queen are a band that have been, obviously their CDs continue to sell. Their albums are, you know, they're sort of what is in the industry known as evergreens. In other words, there's never been a time when people weren't looking for Queen music. So their albums have been reissued several times. And the last um, major reissue campaign occurred in 2011, when after many, many years, they switched from being on EMI in most parts of the world to Universal. Of course, it was a reissue campaign. And I have a couple from this campaign. And uh, one of my favorite Queen albums is The Works. It came out in 1984. I actually was lucky enough to find an original U.S. Capitol version of The Works, which is awesome. But I wanted to get this one because each one of these reissues in this series came, comes with a bonus disc. Um, a bonus EP, mainly because the first song in the EP, I Go Crazy, which is a fun little rock and roll song that was the B-side of Radio Gaga. And because I bought the Capitol version of the works, I didn't buy the Hollywood reissue, which contained it. But this also contains the song Thank God It's Christmas, which uh, still gets played every, every year on the holidays. A uh, couple live versions, single remix if I want to break free. It's the one for me that I had to get. Of course, it's got the flip case like this. This is the original CD back cover. And it's got all the, the lyrics, a little bit of notes about the actual reissued portions. And I mentioned like with the KISS uh, Love Gun reissue. Universal does a good job with the reissues. Here's another one. Uh, one of my all-time favorite albums is Brian Adams' Reckless. This was well worth waiting for. This came out in 2014, the 30th anniversary of that album. And this is a really, really cool reissue. This is my favorite period of Brian Adams, his 80s period. 
He's done a lot of great work since, but this is the one that uh, I usually reach for. This one's worth every penny. So, disc one of this album, first ten songs are the Reckless album as you know it, and uh, the next seven songs are bonus songs that were written for the album but left off, and in many cases recorded by other artists, including Teacher Teacher, which 38 Special had a hit with. Also, a song which would have been the title song, Reckless, which was left off this album. Loverboy took the song, changed Reckless to Dangerous, and recorded it for the Love and Every Minute album. So, it just shows you how prolific that uh, Brian Adams and Jim Valance were the time. They were just cranking out these songs, some of which they said, you know, we're not going to use those, and they became charted songs for other artists. And the second disc is a really good sounding concert from the BBC from early 85. Just great. Um, this is one of my favorite reissues right here. The CDs look like uh, A&M albums did at the time. And uh, the booklet that came with it. All the lyrics and a good write-up on the, the making of the album and, you know, talking about the songs that didn't make it. For me, that was just a, it was a no-brainer when that came out. All right, we're going to go to 1985 now. Now, Rhino, the reissue company, was uh, a Warner company. Their counterpart for Universal for a time was called Hippo, Hip-O. Again, Rhino, Hippo. Uh, and they did a few deluxe editions around 2005, 2006. I don't think that a lot of those are available now. One that I made sure to seek out, one of my favorite bands, Y&T. Now, Y&T reissued a lot of their own albums that they did for A&M themselves uh, through their website and uh, through their web store. And I picked up all of those, but Open Fire, their live album from 85, was not one of them. So Hippo got a hold of this and did a really good job with it. The Hold Your Fire album originally came out, only had eight songs on it, one of which was the studio song, their best-known song, Summertime Girls. This, of course, reissues that entire album. You can see right here it's stamped limited edition and two bonus tracks a live version of black tiger which originally wasn't on the album and a live version of summertime girls which i'd heard about but i'd never had in any form so here's the disc itself this one's a little bit different packaging wise um a little bit of information there about the album and the album itself again like the brian adams one made to look like an a m album label of the period. It's this little attention to details of things that I like. And this fold out, which this this is a, a re recreation of the original liner uh, sleeve that came with the record. So that was a cool reissue. Not the easiest thing to come by if you didn't get it when it first came out. Next up is an album I've talked extensively about. Uh, Matt and I did an episode dedicated to this episode uh, over three years ago now. And it's the only one that I've got two deluxe editions of the same album. Since I've talked about them, I'm only going to go over them very briefly. So, 2006, just uh, one year shy of its 20th anniversary, Universal put out a deluxe edition of Def Leppard's Hysteria. We talk about this on our Hysteria episode. This was an impressive reissue, but it was superseded by this super expanded edition, which this is the most basic of all of the versions of it. This is the one that I picked up. This one contains the, uh, finally on CD, their home video live in the round, In Your Face. And, I mean, there's so many cool aspects of this. It's just how can you, you know, how can you improve upon a, you know, a perfect album, one of my all-time favorites. Well, you can give us a little bit more information than, than we actually were given with the original CD. And they did that very, very well again, another universal issue. And we move from one of my favorite albums to another one of my favorite albums. And this one's uh, celebrating 30 years as of 2018. Bon Jovi's New Jersey. This came out in a deluxe edition in 2014. And kind of like Brian Adams, these guys were very, very prolific during this time and wrote songs that, you know, if they didn't use them, oftentimes they were given to other artists to use. So, disc one contains the original 12-song album. 
also contains their cover of Thin Lizzy's The Boys Are Back in Town, which they recorded during the New Jersey sessions and wasn't released to a year later for the um, Make a Difference Foundation album. And I'm smirking because maybe you know the story behind that. It was anti-drugs and alcohol and the trip to Russia and all of that. Love is War, great B-side from uh, Living in Sin. Uh, I think the reason it was didn't make the album, maybe it sounded a little bit too much like one of their other songs, and an acoustic version of Born to Be My Baby, which knowing John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora was probably how it was originally written. Uh, the um, Disc 3 contains the two home videos that they released from this time period, New Jersey, the videos, and uh, Access All Areas, which is a documentary video, a very cool one too. Now, Disc 2 is called the Sons of Beaches Demos. Sons of Beaches was a working title for this album. They had a lot of funny titles um, floating around. As you can see, some of them are early versions of songs that ended up on the album. Some of them are songs that other artists ended up uh, recording. Some of them ended up on, you know, later Bon Jovi albums, too. So, a uh, couple of the curiosities on here both have to do with Alice Cooper. They were writing with uh, Desmond Child extensively at the time. And there's a version of the song House of Fire on here, which is one of the singles from Alice Cooper's comeback album, Trash, which came out a year after New Jersey. Now, none of the Bon Jovi guys had anything to do with the writing of this song. It's just Desmond Child. And I don't know if he wanted them to knock out a demo version of it or not, but it was, it was just weird that they would record it at this point in their career. They weren't in the habit of recording songs that they didn't have a hand in writing in unless they were well-known covers, like The Boys Are Back in Town. And another one, a ballad called Does Anybody Really Fall in Love Anymore, which became a top 40 hit for Alice Cooper's former guitarist, Kane Roberts, in 1991. Booklet that came with it. Um, all the lyrics, all of the, um, you know, memorabilia. Those are some single covers and things that came out at that time. Just a really well done, you know, reissue. And... Um, Worth it if you're a fan of this period of Bon Jovi and haven't sprung for it, it's worth it. There's the uh, package itself, the two CDs and DVDs, and the DVD that came with it. So, really like this one. So, now we're uh, heading into the 90s. Actually, this is the only 90s album we're going to talk about. This is a unique combination of a reissue and a brand new album. Leave it to uh, Steve Vai to come up with something. Steve Vai's most successful solo album was Passion and Warfare, which came out in 1990. And uh, to celebrate his 25th anniversary, he released a deluxe edition of it in this digipack. But if you flip it over, it also doubles as a new album called Modern Primitive. Now, a lot of the songs on Modern Primitive were written to sound like they could have been off of Passion and Warfare. That's the original back cover of Passion and Warfare, and this is the back cover of Modern Primitive. Um, Steve Vai is one of the more unique guys uh, I don't follow his career like other artists. Some of his stuff is just a bit too abstract for me, but I really like um, the Passion and Warfare era. So a, he does a long write-up here about his inspiration, but why he did this package exactly as he did. 2004, uh, Aerosmith put out uh, their mostly covers album of blues songs, which is actually one of the best things they've done in quite a long time, called Honkin' on Bobo. It came out in this deluxe edition package, And pop the bottom of this out, almost like a CD long box, but not, not as long. This is just your standard CD that comes with it. There's nothing different about this than the retail one you would have bought. And this also came with a little, little harmonica keychain. Now, I've never opened this, so I don't know if it works, and I can't play the harmonica anyway. So, just a cool little package that they did. Uh, next one is a unique one because it's a format. This is the only thing that I have in a format called MVI. Um, which, Music Video Interactive, this is something that they were trying around 2007, and the only thing that came out of bands that I liked in this format was Rush, Snakes, and Arrows. Now, I eventually got a standard version of this, because you can't play this in a CD player, you have to play it in a computer. This has the album, which is quite a good one, and a DVD documentary about the making of the album, which I enjoy those types of things. So this came in a little box. It contains um, this booklet, which is different from the actual Snakes and Arrows cover. And what I like about Snakes and Arrows is that, you know, every single piece of artwork in here could have been an album cover on its own. You Simon really, really did a good job on this. But yeah, this is the only thing that um, 
I have in this MBI format. I don't know if anybody else out there has anything else. And then the CD or the disc just sat in this tray. Very unique. Um, typical of Rush to be on the cutting edge, but this is a format that just for whatever reason just never took off. A band that very much followed in Rush's footsteps put out a cool package in 2009, Dream Theater. And the last album they did b before Mike Portnoy left, Black Clouds and Silver Linings, a great album. This is a three CD special edition set. And this contains disc one is the album proper, which is if you went up and bought it in the store, just a standard edition, that's what you'd get. Disc two has some covers, it's some really good covers. Stargazer by Rainbow, it's got some Queen on here, um, Iron Maiden. And disc three is the album instrumentally. So if you think you can sing like James Labrie, there you go. There's your instant karaoke album. This, uh, this came out in 2009. And the, each of the discs came in uh, their own individual sleeve. And the booklet to the album is part of the packaging. It's, it's attached to the packaging. A uh, band that's on the verge of releasing a new album, which I'm excited about because um, I think they've been on a real good creative streak. I'm not sure who's in the band now, but Queensryche in 2013, as has been, I've chronicled in previous episodes, they were split in two. But anyway, the core band released a self-titled album in 2013, a very good one. And this is a deluxe edition from Century Media. It comes in this box, and the box contains... Uh, just a standard digipack edition of the album. It also contained a sticker, um, a patch, and some uh, some pins too. So I like the album. So the packaging, I mean obviously the, if the album's no good, I don't care how good the packaging is, but when it works, it really works. When it's a good album and it's got good packaging, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, one of the unsung bands, I think, still gets a bad rap in certain quarters. So far, the most recent studio album they've done, and I hope they do another one, this is Winger, their 2014 album, Better Days Coming. This is a deluxe edition because it contains a DVD with a couple of videos and the making of the album. It's also a bonus track on the CD, too. There's usually a couple of things that make it that extra bait, if you like, for um, fans to shell out for a deluxe edition. So there you go, two CD set on Frontiers and the booklet that came with it. And the most recent thing I'm going to show you is an album that we dedicated an entire episode of TVC to, and I still think it's a really strong album. It's the most recent Metallica, Hardwired to Self-Destruct on their own blackened record label. Available in different covers with a different face up front. This is the one that I've got as far as the CD goes. I like how they don't even write the, the band name on the side here. And they write it differently on here. Now, so, there's your back cover with the, the new songs on it. Disc 1 and Disc 2 are the new album. I don't know why they couldn't put them on one disc, but the main uh, reason to get this is the bonus ones. This has uh, some uh, cover songs that were on compilations like Deep Purple and Rainbow, uh, Iron Maiden, and then there's a bunch of live songs that they did at a special Record Store Day performance. Just makes for a cool added, you know, a reason to spend the extra money. And then this is the booklet that comes with the album. And at the very end of it, this explains where all of those bonus tracks come from. So, in typical Metallica fashion, you wait a long time in between albums, but generally it's worth it when they do come out. So, what are some of your favorite deluxe editions of albums? What albums do you like have, that haven't yet been reissued in a deluxe form that you wouldn't mind seeing because there's B-sides that could be collected in soundtrack songs? Comment below with those. I'd be curious to see what it is that you'd like to see come out for a deluxe edition. Thanks for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions.